Coming up on Peninsula Beat, with a new president on the horizon, there are new security concerns for Trump National Golf Club. It's Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, and one local survivor helps to bring awareness to the cause. While the Terranea Resort brings attention to charity under the moonlight. A new eatery will keep you coming back for more delicious dishes, and some local authors get together to support their annual event. There was a big game here on the hill, and we have all the action, and it's that time of year when just about everyone is looking for the perfect turkey. Donald Trump has been voted in as the next president of the United States, and since the outcome of the election, more visitors are coming to Trump National Golf Club, and extra security measures are being taken at the golf course. Liz Brown Swanson spoke with city leaders, law enforcement, and the Trump team about the impact of the election. Life at Trump National Golf Course in Rancho Palos Verdes will never be the same. My boss is President of the United States and I still can't, it just doesn't resonate. Um, right now I think we all have that, I, I, wouldn't, even say, I wouldn't even know what, it, what it, to call it, but it's, it's pride. It's to know that we are going to be watched on a worldly level. So we are very, very excited to say, okay, well what can we do? Let's get together, let's regroup, let's brainstorm of how we can even make this place a bigger jewel. Since Donald Trump's election as president, the team at Trump National is going through their own transition. They're serving more visitors and needing more security. It was a very polarizing campaign, as we all know, and there are some people who will never accept the results of it. We understand that. Um, but at the end of the day, we also have to protect ourselves and our staff and our guests, and the sheriffs are willing to do it, and they understand that, you know, they have to be here when they have to be here, but Secret Service has been fantastic throughout the process as well. From day one, they were able to let us know, if, you know, if you need anything, let us know. Well, we have, uh, we have beefed up uh, patrol here. Our department is uh, working closely with our uh, Criminal Intelligence Bureau, and they are monitoring all the social media. They've also the radical groups, just to make sure that there are no problems here, to protect the property, but mainly protect the, uh, all the workers here. We're working closely with uh, the security here. Trump actually has their own security. So between the sheriffs and uh, their security and our Emergency Operations Bureau, we're going to be fine. Lamina Sheriff Station has added patrols. So far, there have been small protests outside the property made famous in 2002 when Donald Trump acquired the course after it went bankrupt when the 18th hole slid into the ocean. Obviously, when, when he came, he did, uh, Trump National did put Rancho Palos Verdes on the map, and then after that, we had Terranea came in, and that was another wonderful thing. But I have to say that uh, we have worked, this council has worked very well with Mr. Trump. I can tell you I've got nothing but good things from a business perspective and what he's done to the neighborhood and the area. He, he has done exactly what he said he's going to do, is making this the best golf course that there is out there, and uh, embraced the community, and very quietly donated millions and millions of dollars. You know, I know he has that persona of being brash and lawsuits and all that, but very quietly behind the scenes, he does a lot of good, uh, in my humble opinion. Both city council members Susan Brooks and Jerry Dehovic were at Trump's on election night and say regardless of politics and past controversies, this oceanfront golf course has a positive impact on the community. For me personally, I live right across the street from Trump. I think uh, as a city, I think it does add a level of prestige that he's conducting business here in RPV. If Lilly and company and the Trump, Trump organization has done a great job of separating the political side from the business side. The message was business as usual. You know, let's not get into politics. Let's continue to make sure that our guests are happy with the food, the service, et cetera. Do you hope you'll be golfing with him as president? Uh, well, you know, you never know what will happen, you know, during his visits to L.A., but um, I think that would be a very unique experience, and obviously being the president, but, you know, to us, he is Mr. Trump, and he will always continue to be. The last time President-elect Donald Trump visited his course was in June. It's not clear when he will return and who will now be calling the shots. What do I think about the future of this facility? I'm not sure if Mr. Trump is going to be able to run it. I believe it, it will be run by his family. His family has been wonderful. He will always be my boss, um, but we'll see what happens down the road. As was expected in the wake of the election, there has been a lot more activity and now security here at Trump National. And for the staff here, they say what they're excited and planning for next is the day that their boss returns here as the next president of the United States. 
I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. November is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, and one organization spreading help and hope is the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network called PANCAN. Cancer survivor and former RPV Mayor Larry Clark is a PANCAN ambassador. Liz Brown Swanson spoke with Larry about beating this deadly disease at the group's annual leadership breakfast at the Terranea Resort. The Pancreatic Cancer Action Network's annual Purple Stride Leadership Breakfast at Terranea brought survivors, caregivers, and the medical community together to focus on the fight against the deadliest cancer, pancreatic cancer. So this year, pancreatic cancer surpassed breast cancer to become the third leading cause of cancer-related death in the country. And so it's more important than ever that we fight this disease. I'm part of a small percentage of survivors that are out at, at the 10-year I'm out. I'm going on four years early next year. Uh, I'm stage four. I've had eight cancer re uh, reoccurrences of pancreatic cancer. Former RPV mayor and cancer survivor Larry Clark is committed to beating this disease. He and his top surgeon will again co-chair the Purple Stride LA 5K fundraiser held at Exposition Park on May 6th. All the proceeds help PANCAN provide millions of dollars in services to thousands of people nationwide. The Purple Stride oh. event is the one time a year where the entire community can get together and, and support them and raise money for Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. We fund research and conduct research. We provide support for patients and their families who are going through it. We have a clinical trial finder which helps patients and their doctors find clinical trials that they might be eligible for and we're very excited because we just launched a program called Precision Promise and it's the biggest clinical trial for pancreatic cancer patients out there. These purple signs of the times capture the challenges facing those on the front lines. Pancreatic cancer is often difficult to diagnose. Early detection is key. There's no question we need better early detection tools, but there are some everybody should know. They should know jaundice. They should know that new onset diabetes can be a symptom. Abdominal pain can be a symptom. Weight loss can be a symptom. But these are also very vague symptoms, and a lot of people encounter these and they don't have cancer. But all of those things should make a person see a healthcare professional, and everybody should know about those signs. Don't be afraid to say to your doctor, you know, is it possible that I have this, or should I be tested for it? For me, it's just watching your best friend pass away and being there and being part of that um, really changed my perspective. It's hard to just kind of sit back. And so knowing that you're part of uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, an organization that's really focusing on advancing uh, to find a cure to reduce the, the mortality rate is something that I just want to be a part of. And she was an amazing person. and. I just want to honor her and so many other people that unfortunately have lost their battle with this just awful uh, cancer. PANCAN's goal is always to keep raising the rate of survival. We're, we are making progress in beating the cancer. We're making progress with the research efforts across the country and at our institution as well. You have to believe and internalize that you can beat this disease and uh, you have to uh, Surround yourself with a strong uh, team of support, family and friends. You have to seek out the best uh, medical treatment you can. Today's Purple Stride Los Angeles Leadership Breakfast here at Terranea was a great opportunity to invite the community to step up the fight against pancreatic cancer and wage hope. And if you want more information, you can log on to pancan.org. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. And the Terranea Resort brought the community together to raise even more money for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Dozens of people participated in Terranea's full moon yoga class. All proceeds from the fee-based class went to PANCAN. Every month, Terranea invites the public to enjoy yoga under a full moon and to donate to various causes. Every month uh, we have full moon yoga and uh, that was an idea that came, came out and, and what we do, we donate every single penny that, that we collect to uh, different charities and different organizations. Being November, 
the month of pancreatic cancer, um, we thought that uh, you know we will have to, to donate everything to, to pancreatic cancer. You don't need to be a yogi. I am not. Uh, but once in a while I go and have fun with it. Uh, the idea is to connect with different people and to, uh, and to participate in, in all these causes. For more information on signing up for the Full Moon Yoga, call the spa at Terranea. And when we come back, it was the biggest game on the hill, and we have all the action. And are you ready for Turkey Day? Gobble, gobble. There's a new eatery in the promenade on the peninsula. Good Stuff Restaurant offers something for just about everyone's taste palate. From healthy to hearty, their vast menu has it all, and I had a chance to sample it firsthand. Here's more. We're very community-based. We count a big, big part of our business is regulars, locals. I mean, we get our tourists coming in, we get our visitors from out of the area, but we really live and die from our locals. So we're a family style restaurant where you can come in feeling comfortable anytime in any kind of garb really and just sit down and have a meal. You can be with family or friends or have a business meeting or a date. Um, you know it's just it's it's casual and we're open all day so you know you come in and eat. We try to serve a healthier product without being labeled as a healthy restaurant or a health food restaurant. I think it's our, our duty as, as business as business owners in our communities to be a fabric of the community, to help out the community, um, donate to their fundraisers, uh, go and show up and pass food out when, when asked and, and provide gift certificates and dine nights. We do a lot of dine nights for the local schools, churches, um, for just about any, any function. I noticed that you guys have a bar menu as well. Yeah, we have um, we have a nice craft beer, six craft beers. We're we're pouring from basically L.A. and in surrounding areas, and and that's very popular with people. We got a, four TVs, big screen TVs, so we always got a sporting event on. Yeah, so it's a great place to come and grab a burger and a beer and watch watch a game. I am now joined by Chris. Now, Chris, the vibe is fun. This is a really cool place, but the food has to be amazing. And I know these are some of the most popular dishes you have here at Good Stuff. So tell us about them. Well, I picked three dishes. Um, the first one is breakfast, of course. This is our Mexican protein, and it is a all-natural chicken breast, six ounces, chopped up, served over a layer, brown rice, black beans, egg whites, pico de gallo, a little bit of feta, and some jalapenos just to bring a little spice to it. This is an item that has actually been on the menu since 1979. and it, That means that you're not allowed to take it off, you know. That's so true. And I wouldn't be able to take it off because it is definitely one of our signature items. Something we prepare fresh. We cut the zucchini, we bread it, and cook it to order, and it, people love it. And it is an item that is very popular. It's on our appetizer uh, menu. You can sub it to come with a, a sandwich or whatever, but it's a very solid item for, for us on our menu. This is the number one item on the menu, has been the number one item since we put it on the menu. It's our California wrap, fresh roasted turkey, avocado, bacon, tomato, Swiss cheese. It's so yummy. I'm on a getting so hungry now. Meat tortilla, <laughs> and, I'm, and I served it with the sweet potato fries, which are yummy as well. In addition to all this yummy food, of course, we have dessert, yes? Yes, we got fresh baked brownies, cookies and fudge, we got apple pie, we've got fruit crisp, we got just a, whatever you want. You can get satisfied that sweet tooth of yours. We have outside dining room and it's big, dog friendly, umbrellas, heaters, depending on what the temperature is. Uh, we also have these windows that, that roll up, these big garage door windows, so we really get a nice feel of indoor, outdoor and it's uh, extremely popular. I mean, the patio is cranking most of the time when the weather's nice. People really appreciate the fact that we took a chance, we came up to the hill, we made it our first year, 
And I had, I talked to people that had been residents for 50 years up here and said, you know, you guys made it and we are very thankful. We're gonna support you. We have a little variety for everybody. We have something for everyone. The PV Women's Club held their annual Books and Authors Luncheon at Trump National Golf Club. Liz Brown Swanson joins us from the special event which showcased top authors as well as raised funds for local students. More than a hundred women and a few men too lined up to meet six great authors at the Palace Verdes Women's Club annual Books and Authors Luncheon. This longtime tradition raises scholarship money for local students. Our charities here are in our community and we support four scholarships for high schools in the Palos Verdes Peninsula uh, School District. And um, so we're continuing to do the work that our 90th birthday comes up the first part of January. This is the 59th annual Books and Authors. Um, there's a lot of history here, so we're just keeping all of those good works going. Uh, so that future generations know what volunteerism is and we feel like this is an example of what it is. We bought four copies of Patricia Stays' book, The Bruges Tapestries, because it turns out that my husband, our last name is also Stays, and my husband's great-grandfather and Patricia's great-grandfather were brothers. My book is a true story about a mother and her three children who were uh, trapped in, in, uh, in Europe during World War II. There, the father was in the United States, and there was, no con there, were, there was no male connection between Greece and the United States during World War II. So they could not, he, he never knew until the war ended what, where his family was or if they, had still, they were still alive. You are a member of PV Women's Club, so it's extra special to talk about that connection and that being here as an author. Yes, I, we, my husband and I ha have lived on the peninsula for, I guess, 43 years, 42, 40, something like that. And um, this is a great organization. I'm looking forward to being able to talk to other book lovers. Um, this group made a, a commitment to reading, which is fabulous, and I'm excited to tell them about my novel. Yes, exactly. Meeting other readers is one of the, my favorite things to do uh, as an author, and so it's always great to talk about your own book. Big congratulations to the PV Women's Club for yet another successful Books and Authors Luncheon. And this year was extra special as the organization is celebrating 90 years on the peninsula. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. And when we come back, it's all about the turkey. Are you ready for the big day? And the PV versus Penn football game brought everyone together to join in on the rivalry. We'll be right back. And in sports, when Peninsula and PV High play against each other in football, there's always a rivalry. But this year's big game also brought out the community. And both principals made sure that everyone came together as one. I think we have a rivalry, and I think it's a healthy rivalry. And we appreciate the hospitality of um, Palos Verdes High. We've had a fabulous barbecue. It's just such a good feeling. And win or lose, it's just um, a huge success all the way around. You know, you win Win or lose, um, this team this year has won many games, and I know the kids are excited about this one today. Yeah, we're, we're very excited. It's been a fabulous year after a not-so-fabulous year. I couldn't have dreamed that we'd be here and be so competitive. Well, I think we're all so proud of um, the growth that our team has made, our football program, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say Dave Young and his staff, they are incredible, incredible. Everything that you could ever want um, in a football coach for your young men. He's uh, just a remarkable human being. I would say that this is more of a community event. Uh, we had a free barbecue before the football game and both PV and Penn we got together uh, as a community before the football game. Uh, Dr. Austin always says one hill and that's what this is about but 
Look at the, the look at the turnout. Look at look at Red Tide. Look at the zoo. I mean, this is what football is about, and we're really excited for today. You know, it's kind of amazing because um, you, you know, one of your coaches left the school this year to go over to help Peninsula out, and it's been a really it's been a really great year for them. But you guys had something to do with that too. You know, Dave Young, he's an amazing person, an excellent coach, and Guy Gardner, our coach, of course, was his mentor. Um, they are two excellent role models and uh, great father figures for the programs, and uh, I wish them all the best. And um, Guy Gardner, I mean, any successful coach will have those who he brings up, and he's in the, the mode of training head coaches. So I'm really proud of Dave Young, really happy for Coach Gardner, and uh, wish all of success for, for both programs. You know, it's pretty cool. Like you said, there's a barbecue beforehand. You guys just get this ready to go for the whole community to come out and you have fun today. Yeah, thank you, Maria. I mean, the barbecue was a big deal. And uh, our ASB, Be the Change, and our Principals Advisory Council, and Peninsula's ASB, I mean, it was a team effort. So I really want to thank the community, thank you guys, and I uh, just want to thank the district officials for being here as well. But look, look at the student school spirit. Like, there's no day game like this right now happening at any high school, probably in the country. And so the spirit is alive, and there's nothing like it. Um, and, and we are a special place. And finally, Thanksgiving brings together family, friends, football, and food, most notably the turkey being the star of the show. I had a chance to talk to a local butcher who gives us all the info on how to have the perfect turkey. We are here today in San Pedro at South Shore Meats, and we're going to tell you everything you need to know about that Thanksgiving turkey. Darko, it's Thanksgiving time. Tell us what people need to know about turkeys. Well, not very much. When you come to my shop, you only have to ask me for the turkey and how many people you have in, and I would suggest for the size and all that. The way it works is they usually minimum ten, uh, one pound a person, but usually people buy more, more than that. How many uh, days in advance do you need to order and when, you, when they get it, uh, like that's the a, day before? or a, It's a total up to them because I order my turkey about two, three months uh, before the holiday. Okay. In order to get nowadays the turkey that you want, you have to put it in order uh, way in advance. Do they pick it up the day before, the week before? Mostly the day, day or two before. When people come in, do they ever ask you, how should I prepare my turkey? What should I, how should I cook it? And then what do you, what do you suggest to them? I suggest just wash it thoroughly and dry it a little bit and put your favorite rub on it okay. and let it cook. That's all. We hear so much about uh, deep fried turkeys, baking them in the oven. I, what do I you understand. suggest? Okay. I, my, my recipe is very simple. Like I said, put a, your favorite rub, rub it nicely, and put it in the oven, let it go. And that's all you need to do. You put this on and nothing else. Okay. Nothing else. Now, do you put it in a bag or do you just cook no, it with a I lid, foil no, on top? Nothing. Absolutely okay. nothing. Nothing. Just to put it in a deep pan and that's all. That's it. How many hours does it take to cook a turkey? Oh, that depends on the size. Usually, like a 10, 12 pounds turkey would take around three, three and a half hours. Okay. And the bigger the gets turkey, the longer it goes, of course. What are your thoughts on stuffing the turkey versus not yeah, stuffing? If you are a good stuff, stuff maker, yes, I suggest to make a good stuffing. Yes, definitely. Okay. You can baste it if you like. I personally don't ever do it. Okay. Like I said, I just let it go. You buy quality turkey that's going to be tender and moist, and, and that's, that's it. The only thing you have to do is buy quality. Free range turkeys are excellent. And the way that they uh, feed them, or they, how they take care of them, it makes a huge difference. When you are clean, after you clean your turkey, what do you do with the insides of the turkey? And the inside, I, I, I usually don't use the inside. The only neck, perhaps, and something else, to cook the little broth for, to make a gravy. Okay. As far as the giblets, I'm not too much on that. Okay. Many people do, though. I cook mine at 325 degrees. And you don't move? Yeah, I don't move the temperature at all. That's all the old time cooking, yes. Ther thermometer is always nice to have. Okay. Right. But if you don't have it, you can take a turkey out and fry it a tie a little bit. And if it's still bloody inside, that means it's not done. Okay. If it's no blood, nothing, that means turkey is done. I like to keep it as simple as possible. Why, why do you think some people get overwhelmed when it comes to turkey? Because it's I, big or what? I have no idea why. Because they don't cook it much. They have it once a year or twice the most. Yeah. And they, they, they make a big deal out of it. I don't see what is the, so big deal. It's that's, very simple. That's because you're the expert. <laughs> I don't know about that. But. <laughs> of course it's easy for Darko. He's the expert.
Well, that will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV TV, we want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving.